Okay. I guess everybody see my screen now. Hi, everybody. Thank you for being here this evening. I'm very glad to do this talk, and I want to thank Jeff and Hannah for this opportunity. Um, this is an inspirational talk where I want to share with you some thoughts about our job as designers, uh, which are the things to keep in mind for the future and how this may impact the world. And to do so, I just want to start with an example. Have you ever helped someone who is not a designer in using an app or some digital device? Just think, for example, elderly people, maybe your parents, uncles, or aunts. If they ever asked you about some task that we designer consider pretty easy, for example, nowadays, making a video call during the pandemic, and how do you felt in that moment? Guess we all felt frustrated somehow. And most of the time, probably we came out of those situations thinking these people are not that smart or blaming them for not understanding something we all consider quite elementary. But what if, that's, if actually it's our fault? In late December, I participated in a design event where the Italian UX designer, Ilaria Mauric, which is here tonight, by the way, so thank you for being here, during her talk about the future of design said that she oft often observed in herself and other designers a snobbish behavior, which is to learn from users, and instead we have taken the habit of criticizing them, or even worse, mocking them for how they use technologies or the internet. And that's actually the opposite behavior compared to the empathic one we claim so much in recent years. She adds that as designers, we are always convinced about the right or wrong way to use the web and technologies. So basically we design in one way, sometimes mistaking the tone of communication or maybe designing interaction which are unsuitable for certain types of users. And at the end, we release digital products and services that we believe we have understanding or control of, but instead they are perceived as cryptic or maybe ineffective, or they are even used for other purposes than the ones that we thought initially. So that talk led me to a question, are we designers really snobbish? Well, Thinking about my personal experience as a designer, I lived and worked in, for nine years in Milan, a city that is well known in Italy for its lack of empathy. And the design environment there, mostly in communication, where I was working at that time, was, I would say, extremely fake. You know, more concentrated on facades, appearance, and recognitions, and that gave me a really bad perception of designers. And somehow that's a behavior I still see nowadays on social media from designers worldwide, people that talk more about the success they have or post useless information just to grow their own fame or maybe monetization instead of you know, um, sharing good practices or insights which could be actually useful for the community. Of course, I don't want to generalize, but I often see designers more concentrated on things like trends or how they are perceived by others, instead of focusing on the act of design itself and the true meaning of our job, which, by the way, is this. Thankfully, one thing that changed my point of view, and not only actually about my job, has been traveling and getting in touch with many peoples and cultures worldwide. Um, I think that getting out of our comfort zones to understand someone who's different from us is the first part of this growth process as designers. Then I had a very positive experience doing an UI master in Rome, where I discovered a whole new group of designers with a completely different attitude than the one that I found back in Milan. At that point, also my networking in the business changed quite a lot. 
getting in touch with people I'd never been aware of before. Designers that had this proactive behavior of mutual exchange and growth. But there is another thing that actually changed my perspective about designers. In 2018, the Italian government made these uh, immigration policies, which were violating the human rights, basically letting people die in the Mediterranean. So together with friends who work in several design fields, we thought, why don't we put our skills in favor of something good to protest against these policies and somehow counteract the distorted narrative of politician towards this subject. So we decided to launch a pro bono campaign asking people to create postcards that were depicting uh, through illustration or graphic design the tragedy that was happening offshore. And later we delivered all these postcards to our Minister of the Interior. We had no funny at all, yet we got a strong resonance in Italian media. But beyond the success of the campaign, there is one thing that positively surprised me, which is the high participation of designers and creative people in support of the campaign for free. I realized that there is a huge unexpressed power out there. So many beautiful people who truly believe in what they do and are open to collaborate and reach a goal together instead than just for their own thing. So I came to the conclusion that actually design can change the world for better. And that's not an overstatement because design is actually a political act. If we give a look to all that happened in recent times, it's inevitable to stop and think about what the internet, social networks, and digital products at large represent nowadays. They are indeed marvelous tools with great potential, but we cannot turn an eye on how they are effectively used. Let's think about at the proliferation of hate speech, fake news, bullying, and so on. And we also need to think how these products and services we create are communicating with our users or about the interactions that we design to make them more engaging, but at the same time also creating addictions or inducing depression in our users. Recently, I have read an re interesting article by Mark Ernst, who introduced a provocative yet realistic new meaning for UX as user exploitation. And he's not that wrong if we think about dark patterns in digital products or how we manipulate users. For example, sticking them with paid memberships or make it hard to opt out from a service. I believe that as designers, we do have responsibilities. So what can we do to make our work more responsible in the future? I just wanna give you some examples of the themes which I think it will be fundamental to keep in mind in the years to come. And I don't want you to think uh, at things bigger than ourselves. Instead, let's start with a small action in our design process that could have a positive impact on the world. Let's start with empathy, a word designers have been using a lot during the last decade, which has a wonderful meaning, but let's face it, it's quite an utopian concept. It means to feel exactly what another person feels, and that's not possible unless you lived a very similar experience. I think that we shouldn't get into our user's feet but instead be compassionate with them, not only listening and understanding their needs without any judgment, but also doing everything in our possibilities to empower them and make them feel better. And of course, we don't only need to become with our users, but also between ourselves in design communities, because I honestly think that someone who is not kind with a user, you know, um, uh, sorry, someone who is not uh, kind of with a colleague could never be empathic with a user. 
in some terms, is what the New Yorker journalist Gia Tolentino writes about in her book, Trick Mirror. Here, she talks more about digital activism and the fact that on the web, we only fight for the battles that concerns us or, on, or our community because we put our self into everything. But actually, there are things like political solidarity, which is based on a shared commitment to a cause that doesn't have to be personal. In other terms, we don't have to be empathic or feel exactly what our users feel, but instead fight with them, regardless of political or moral reasons. Specifically in uh, our environment, we need to shift from the paradigm of human-centered design, which we all know so well, to something that involves more humanity than our handful of personas, in some way to shift from the single user to the broader concept of community. Because users are a multitude of different people, and it's our mission as designers to not exclude any single one of them. In order to do so, Irina Yu, in a talk for Envision, suggests that we need to invest not only in usability testing, but in research that involves methods employed by psychologists, sociologists, anthropologists, and ethicists to study the ecosystem of people and how they interact with each other. This concept of kindness applies also to words. Nowadays, we hear lots of discussions about things like cancel culture or the danger of killing opinion that differ from the politically correct. But actually, I disagree with this idea because opinions that cause harm to someone needs to stop. And the words that we use must be carefully chosen. So when we write content or even microcopy for our digital products, are we really welcoming a multitude of different human beings? For example, I think that we need to stop asking our users for gender. Since this binary male and female concept is proven being completely unequal. And also get rid of words which are somehow still connected with slavery, racism, or patriarchy. In late years, many discussions spark about the subjects, and I think that in 2021, it's an inevitable moral duty to consider these things when designing. This applies, of course, also to images, which interest myself more because I'm a UI designer, where most of the time only white people are depicted and diversity is not taken in consideration or where women are still represented in this obsolete patriarchal point of view only as mothers or housewives. Another thing we often don't think about, which actually became pretty evident during the COVID-19 pandemic, is the existence also in rich countries of digital divide. I know the designers here in Italy who did research for distance learning platforms and they discovered a large number of students who live in poor families that were not able to access education due to the lack of resources like a personal computer or a broadband internet connection. And this thing, you can imagine that it's even greater in third world countries. So when we design something, let's always think that some users could not have the latest technologies, infrastructures, or just possibilities that we have. Which means also to design things easily accessible for any kind of user, also those with disabilities. Since according to World Health Organization, the 15% of global population, so is basically one person every seven, has at least one disability. Another important aspect is privacy. Data are considered the gold of our century, and they are so important in our job to understand the users. But data are not just numbers in a spreadsheet. They are a representation of human beings, and we cannot use them in opaque processes against 
our users will, or even worse, to trigger behaviors in our users, which could be debatable or even harmful to them. I don't want to bring Apple as the perfect example, but in a recent speech in Brussels, Tim Cook actually said something I agree with. He said, if a business is built on misleading users on data exploitation, on choices there are no choices at all, then it does not deserve our praise but reform. And he says that we can no longer turn a blind eye to a theory of technologies that says all engagement is good engagement, the longer the better, and all with the goal of collecting as much data as possible. So, also, designers have responsibility to make a better world. And I think this is actually the historically, I mean, the uh, right time historically, because, you know, in this last decade, designers have been more involved than ever in processes of any kind. And companies finally acknowledge design as an important piece in their processes. Think about Renault firm like we know that has been recently acquired by Twitter. True is that also our clients sometimes needs to be more kind to us as well, but something is definitely changing and they hear us and trust our knowledge and experience more than ever. I think this is the right time to bring all these subjects on the table with our clients and to remember them and maybe to us as well, that without our users, our jobs would never exist. So I invite you to ask yourself, how am I designing kindness into my everyday practice? And while you think about that, I want to leave you with an inspirational quote by Martin Luther King. And I know it sounds such a cliche, but I really love it when he talks about this creative force in the universe, working to pull down the gigantic mountains of evil. I really think this is our mission as designers for the years to come. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> see a lot of digital claps, but um, thank you so thank much for you. that. Yeah, that was, um, I was really excited to see, I've seen a little bit of it in progress, but um, hearing your voice and kind of, hearing your experiences and, and your take on it um, has been really uh, different and great. Um, it's, you know, it speaks a lot to like the humanity of hearing somebody talk about something versus just seeing a slide that says something on it in a way. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, but we actually have a fair amount of questions. So I, I kind of just want okay. to answer them. Um, and so, yeah, if you guys still have some questions, um, feel free to pop them in the question panel, as well as upvote any ones that we're interested in. Um, so we have one from Jeff, and he goes, do you have any tips for designers that want to design a pro bono campaign for good? Oh, well, that's, that's hard, actually, because, <laughs> I mean, when, when we did ours, um, you know, we started pretty um immediate, immediately because we um all everything happened with a um a quote from our minister of the interior at, at the time uh that said that ngos that were saving um, you know um migrants in the mediterranean uh would have seen italy only on postcards so we use actually this name for the campaign and we created all this narrative but it, it was something that was just creating, I don't know, few nights because we were all people working during the work days. So, I mean, uh, um, I mean, working hours. So uh, we did everything in the night and it took a lot of effort for a month. And, but it was really great because as I said, um, it was an opportunity to um, meet a lot of new people and get in touch with people I never knew before. So my, my, I don't know, for maybe the suggestion is just to um, do it, do it. If it's a good idea, do it. Yeah, I mean, I love that. Like, you know, if you're passionate about it and it feels like something you want to work yeah. for, like sometimes it's hard, but you can find a way. 
Um, but what I hear you actually say in that as well is um, like collaboration and community. Like maybe you can't do it on your own. No, no maybe it's, it's impossible. about like imp like rallying around an idea together with multiple people. Yeah, um, definitely. I have an assumption that like the people that you had in your group probably all had a variety of different skills, and so you can gain your own into that and somebody else ha maybe has something that you don't have. And so that can be how you kind of get things going too. Exactly. In fact, actually our group was made by me that I was art directing and doing all the graphic stuff and also the website. Um, but there, there were other friends that were doing like social media and other just creative and strategic and uh, others with the worth. We did also, um, uh, spot on youtube so we also had all you know editing filmmaking things so everybody we involved every friends we knew <laughs> yeah yeah um awesome so we have another question from hannah um not me <laughs> um, <Okay. laughs> uh, she says uh do you have any advice for working with people who may not see the value in designing kindly how can we make sure everyone sees the value in it mm, good question well, um, I think um, it's difficult to say that, but um, at least what is what I try to do as a freelancer, uh, and I must agree that also the design firms I work with, uh, they are applying the same method. I mean, to run away as soon as a client doesn't, you know, share the same values that you have because it, it would be quite impossible to, you know, uh, get inside a company that has a complete other uh, mindset. Of course, you can work on it. You can, I mean, but I don't have a specific ways that he, how you can do it this. I know that is difficult. Yeah. Yeah, I would also maybe throw that out to the community too. If you guys have any ideas of how maybe, you've tried it in the past or you've seen things at work like i would encourage you to throw that in the chat too it'd be great to hear from this amazing community we have as well of maybe things that have worked for them um yeah yeah but because actually myself i have more questions than answers so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so we have another question from hannah as well she says how do you recommend integrating kindness into the design process so thinking about like um, research or testing, like how can we kind of integrate this, these ideas into like our personal design process? Well, as I said, it's, um, I made some example during the slides. So um, it could be not doing like, specifically in research, not only usability testing, but um, use methods that are used by anthropologists, for example, to change our process. Uh, in this case as well, I don't have the, the right answer to how you can change this process. We need to study, we need to make, you know, um, trials to get uh, in some valuable results. Uh, for example, in my case, doing more UI design, uh, as I said, I pay attention to the words I use on, on the things that I design and also for example, I, I really care for accessibility in UI design. So I tend to make all the colors accessible and you know all the patterns that I use that could be easily re read or um, uh, you know interacted with. Yeah, and I think like sometimes I'm not always aware of like how much power we do have as designers because these are like like we are putting these things out into the world that people are working with. And so I think back to Hannah's original question and even this question, I, I would imagine that like being more aware as a designer is the first step is like understanding yeah. that these things are issues and then being able to start to integrate them into your design or doing maybe presentations with your like team that doesn't maybe know either. And so they're like the first step is always awareness and then we can bring Definitely. into like, how do we integrate it beyond that as well? Yeah. Um, okay, so we have one from Rafael, 
uh, would it be possible to receive a copy of this presentation slash PowerPoint or a link to the recorded presentation? Um, I can answer about the recorded presentation. We do record all of these and we put them up on YouTube um, within a couple days afterwards. Um, I will definitely put that up. I always put it up on the meetup link. So we are on meetup.com under the Guild of Working Designers. We always put it there. Um, and we can also send out an email to all the participants who came today that has a link in it as well. So, um, and if, I don't know if you're open to sharing the slides as well. Yeah, but. sure. No problem at all. But I think I, I was actually thinking to convert this to uh, maybe a medium article. So it's also easily be, I mean, easily readable because the, the slides without the words are not that useful. So probably an article would make sense. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, we'll definitely get this information out to everyone um, so they can use it and maybe show it to their teammates um, as a first leading point too. Um, okay, so we have a question from Simona now. Uh, should working designers uphold ethic codes? Um, Mike Monterio is... absolutely need uh, ethic code i mean it's uh, it's i mean what a, what a strange timing because uh, today i in the slack channel of um, one of the design firm that, that i work with they share their ethic code document so i think that it's really important actually to have it every company should have it mm -hmm. um, we, we can i mean since we are designing most of the time digital products that uh, in some way uh, change our worlds, because look at what social media did in just 10 years of our lives. So I think it's, it's really important to um, include ethics in what we do. It's, I think it's uh, fundamental right now. We cannot, uh, I mean, postpone it anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm very curious about this subject too and like of people's opinions because like I, I remember a conversation I was having with somebody recently where it's like, you know, doctors have to ha sign a code of ethics that they're going to always put the patient's like interest um, first in a way um, as far as like that's my understanding of the basic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think that like there is some like there is we do have an effect on people like we like even yeah. if it's psychological or emotional like and there should be responsibility and and um, kind of effort taken into that and and yeah. acknowledgement of it for sure. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I, I'd also be uh, curious of other people's opinions of that. Um, yeah, so if you want to red message, yeah, actually, I made this it. talk. Yeah, I made this talk, but I wanted actually to, you know, more interact with people to hear what they are, their yeah. opinion about this. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can hop on a table afterwards and-, and Yeah, sure. Too. Um, yeah, so, and then we have, um, sorry, I think one of them got broken up. Um, so, but shouldn't even kindness have a limit, especially when kindness reaches a point when can cause harm, we do not realize. How can we filter that? Um, this is from Costos. Um, hmm. I don't know, uh, I don't get which kind of kindness can cause harm to somebody. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that I wonder, like, I'm thinking about like the limits of kindness in no sense that like, if it then becomes harmful to you, like if you become selfless in a way that then you're not taking care of yourself. Um, yeah, okay. Okay, it can make I, sense. But I guess I'm having a hard time translating that into like a design practice. Me idea. too, me too. Um, by the way, I don't know. I mean, kindness to me means to be compassionate with another human being. So I don't think it could never cause harm to somebody unless it's a i don't know maybe a psychological strange situation that like as you say before anna but otherwise i don't see any uh li limits in that mm -hmm. yeah 
So, okay, so we have a question from Val. They say, would you say are, what would you say are the, the for-profit companies that excel at kind ethical product design? Uh, which one are? Yeah, like do you have, do you have any like companies, like for-profit companies that you're looking at that like you see are doing positive work right now? Uh, I don't want to <laughs> take responsibility for our companies because I don't know how it works inside. Maybe there are, you know, so, some companies, companies, they have this facade that they are pro, uh, you know, inclusion, pro diversity and so on, uh, pro environment. Um, but you cannot know what it's, uh, you know, happening inside that company. And that actually really scares me because um i don't know which one company i can take as a i don't i, I don't recall right now actually in digital products i mean uh, at least um yeah, yeah i can think i need to think maybe, about it like off the top of my head is like like a lot of um and a lot of like digital products are doing things where they're trying to like um one thing you didn't talk about in here, which I know you were talking about, is like environmental kindness, and that there mm -hmm. are like a lot of products now that are like trying to combat their like CO emissions by planting trees with the amount of products that they're um, build. Uh, the, there's the like search engines that are more eth like uh, environmentally safe by like planting yeah. trees. Like how much searching you do on them. Um, I can't. I'm awful at names. I can't remember the names off the top of my head. Um, uh, yeah, neither me. But I I understood which one you are talking about. Yeah. Um, well, it's it's hitting a little close to time, and so I want to make sure we have some time to chat uh, with everyone. These um, the questions that we asked for sure. Um, we're happy to chop on tables afterwards and continue with that conversation. There is one last question though that we have. Um, how can we follow you, Pietro? Do you have any social channel or websites that you'd like to share? I have social media, so I, I really don't like them. <laughs> I must <laughs> say the truth. But uh, yes, I'm all, on every social media, more LinkedIn, Twitter, this, this ones. I mean, if you follow me, I will follow back. I will appreciate and it's just under your name pietro gregorini i always use my name and surname so it's really easy to reach awesome. yeah well i want to thank you again um for chatting with us today um i um just wanted to do a little bit of announcement before we hop over to uh the tables and networking um, so as I said, this is the Guild of Working Designers. You can find us on meetup.com. Um, our next meetup uh, will be March 17th. Um, the speaker is TBA. Um, we will be working with one of our uh, alumni to, um, uh, they'll be speaking at one of them, but we just haven't kind of figured that out yet. And then we have another in April uh, 14th with Adam Zeiner, who is a, designer based in Austin, Texas, and he's going to talk about future studies and strategic foresight. So those are the next two that we have coming up. Um, and uh, just a little plug for ourselves as well. We just had applications open for our advanced UX design course for the real world. Um, if you're something you're interested in, please check it out. Pietro also teaches design. I know he teaches UI design. So if you're curious about that as well, feel free to chat him about that. Um, but other than that, thanks so much. Thank you.